like Rabbi Lou, I merited to meet the Rebetzin uh, many times as a child. My older siblings like to remind me I'm at the bottom of the food chain, so it wasn't as frequently as, say, my older siblings. And really merited to see the love and the tenderness and concern the Rebetzin had to those that had the opportunity to interact, as you heard from Rabbi, Rabbi Lou and Dr. Weiss. And so, you know, I grew up in a home where I remember my younger brother's bar mitzvah, my father saying the Rebetzin's waiting for an album. And when he brought the album to, to the Rebetzin, the Rebetzin said, can I hold it so we can look at it? And a week or two later, she gave it back. I remember uh, my sister's wedding where the Rebetzin said, would you please bring the chassan and kala to the house after the uh, chuppah on the way to the reception? And the Rebetzin had put out a beautiful spread for the chassan and kala because they were fasting that day. And the Rebetzin gave them a bracha and became very emotional. To uh, you, you saw the love of a mother blessing her children on the day of their chuppah. So I, I lived through a lot of the similar awareness, if you would, of this tremendous, tremendous love that the Rebetzin felt uh, towards every chassid. Some of us just had that, uh, that schus or the schus of our parents uh, to be able to see it firsthand. But that's not the story I would like to share. I would like to share, in honor of this, Fabreng, in a very personal story uh, with all of us sharing in this Fabreng tonight uh, in honor of Chafbe Shvat. I'm not sure if anyone here can tell me if there's a statute of limitations on making trouble in yeshiva. Can they still come after me now after all these years? Uh, but hopefully my Rosh Yeshiva from back then isn't watching, uh, isn't participating in this Fabrengin tonight. And hopefully my little children are sleeping. <laughs> but in the spirit of a Fabrengin, I'd like to put my heart on the table, as, as we would say. L'chaim. Uh, the story took place in 1987. I was a bachar in yeshiva in Israel. And the, the uh, Rebbe had just, uh, um, Chabad had just won the appeal for the big saga of the Svarim. And we were told, on the, the appeal came down, the verdict came down on Chav Hei Cheshven in 1987. And two days later, on the 27th of Cheshvin, we were told that the following Monday, the second day of Kislev, the Svarim were actually being returned to 770. So in true fashion of what they teach us in Yeshiva, the philosophy of better say you're sorry than ask permission, uh, a friend and I decided to hop on a plane and fly back to New York. Uh, to participate in the Simcha, to be there to celebrate with our Rebbe on this great day. Um, we know that the Rebbe was not happy that week when he saw Bachram standing outside 770, because the Rebbe felt the Bachram should be in yeshiva. And my father, being a staunch chassid, uh, was disappointed in my choices as well. And the entire week, he reminded me constantly of the bad choice I made. Friday night, my father had a tradition of going to the Rebbe's house to check on the Rebbetzin, get a little feedback on how the Rebbe was feeling, and then he would leave before the Rebbe would come home. And my father comes home for dinner, Friday night, and walks into the house and gives me, greets me with a warm shalom aleichem. A whole week I got the cold shoulder. I get a warm shalom aleichem. So I looked at my father and I said, wow, in honor of what am I getting such a warm shalom aleichem? So my father said, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I went in to see the Rebetzin and as she would typically do, she wanted to know how all the children were doing. And I told her that you came from Eretz Yisrael, and you were very disappointed. And I'm like, oy vey. You know, my father's hearing this with the Rebetzin. 
And my father looks at me with a twinkle in his eye and he says, you know what the Rebbetzin said? The Rebbetzin looked at my father and said, label. Other Bachrim and other communities, when they want to make trouble, they go to a movie, they find other things to do. At least you know that the Bachrim and Lubavitch, including your son Shlaimi, their Gashmias, their fun is their Rebbe. Go easy on him. And that's why I got that big Shalom Aleichem. The reason I wanted to share this story with all of you joining us tonight for this Vabrengen is to illustrate, as we heard tonight so eloquently from, from my dear colleagues here, that there was a real love, a very personal, deep-rooted love of the Rebetzin as a partner with the Rebbe for each and every one of us. And we didn't always necessarily get to see it ourselves on a personal level. And maybe for some of us sitting here at the table, we were the ones that were able to turn around and share with our friends that we have a mother who loves us unconditionally, that lives on President Street. But it was a very real love. It was an unconditional love where the Rebetzin saw only our goodness and only our potential. And it, was a, it had a profound impact on me. My father was thrilled and I was humbled because I said, Halavai, my gosh, this would only be the Rebbe. But it's something that pushes me forward every day since. And I, I feel that as we prepare here for Chaf Shvat, we need to all internalize this concept of the love that the Rebetzin, together with the Rebbe, obviously, had for each, each one of us. Whether we've personally met the Rebetzin or not, it was very real, and it was unconditional, and it was always with a good eye. L'chaim.